Alright guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I've had quite a few requests to go through step by step on how I support my 3D prints. Uh, just to clarify, I print 1 6 scale and quarter scale models. I don't do minis. Almost all the tutorials I've seen online have all been for supporting minis and you know, that process works well for that but it doesn't necessarily translate to large scale models that take up full dill plates, you know, weigh, weigh a few hundred grams per print. So I'm gonna try and go through, explain as best I can on how I do it. Um, so this is gonna be a full series, start to finish. We're gonna do Black Suit Superman Henry Cavill likeness. This is the best model that I have found out there. And uh, yeah, we're going to do this guy quarter scale. I'm going to cover supporting large parts, drilling tubes for visual effects, lighting, fiber optics. Um, maybe we can do some more advanced stuff later. Programming. I use um, Arduino Uno to program NeoPixels, but that's jumping way ahead. So let's let's stick to the basics here. How how do I go about supporting large models, large parts? Um, everything that I use, I'll put in the description. Um, with links. Uh, this model is available from Diego Rudy on Gumroad, so I will post the link for that there as well. Uh, you can also check him out on ArtStation. He does fantastic work, so if you're looking to have something custom made, shoot him a message. I'm sure he can help you out. Okay, so two pieces of software in my workflow for supporting and slicing. Prusa Slicer. Uh, current version is 2.3. That's what I'm going to show in this video. There is a little bit of a setup, so I'll go through that initially. So hop over to uh, prusa3d.com and download the standalone version of that. All the software is free. You don't have to pay for anything. Uh, I even use the free lychee version, there's no need to uh, pay for pro unless you want to. Um, so that's also the slicer I use, lychee, make sure you get the most current version. They have fixed a lot of the memory issues that were causing lots of crashing, so definitely pick up the, uh, the most current version, 331, for that. So once you've downloaded those two pieces of software, we're going to open up Prusa. By default, it's probably going to look like this. Um, if it's not on the SL1 printer, it's either going to be on the Prusa Mini or one of the other filament settings. So what you want, first thing you want to do is switch this printer, switch it to SL1. So the first thing we need to do is customize our platter size or build plate. Um, if you have a small resin printer, Mars, Mars Pro, Photon, any of those um, small resin printers, this build plate will probably be good enough. But uh, for any of the 8.9 inch printers, you're going to have to customize your build plate size. So in order to do that, we go into printer settings, and under the general tab, we're going to go bed shape, set. Uh, we know it's a rectangular shape bed. Uh, I'm running uh, Elegu Saturn, so 196 by 126. And max print height, this is your Z-axis, so 200. For the Saturn, uh, Mono X, 
and I think the e packs are both around 250 but just check with your you know the settings of your printer to see where that should fall in line um, we're gonna save this as a new profile we're gonna call it for me uh, I'll do Saturn so now you got your platter size set if you go back to platter you'll see now you have um, a proper representation of the area you have to work with. So next thing we're going to do is uh, set our support settings. So to do that, we're going to go into print settings, supports. Now, all this here, support head, I leave all that default. The only thing I change in this window is from zigzag, switch it to dynamic and what this does is it adapts the supports for the estimated weight of the model that you're printing at least that's what I've seen that it does the second thing I go in and change is under pad pad wall slope you want to change this to 45 degrees that gives you an angle on your your pad underneath the model and uh, it just makes it a lot easier to remove the model from the build plate if you have a flex plate it's not going to make any difference but I don't have one so that's the setting I changed to make my life easier now the third thing is hollowing so you can set it up to automatically hollow the model or sorry, automatically set up the model to hollow as soon as you load it. I don't do that because not every part that I print I want hollowed, especially if there's some funny geometry in there or if the part's really thin. You might not want to have a one and a half millimeter cavity inside that model. It doesn't make sense. So I leave this disabled and I'll go in and manually enable hollowing on each part that I import. But wall thickness, we want, this is entirely up to you, but I run all my big models, I run 1.5 millimeter walls. Some people might say that that's too thin. Works for me, but there's also some steps that I take later on, which I'll cover in another video that I do to increase the density and structure and, and solidity of the model on the inside because these are going to be hollow completely hollow so besides that that's honestly all I change we're going to run auto supports I have zero issues if I have a failure it's 99% of the time my fault or FEP change maybe I let the resin sit in the vat too long those are usually the only issues I deal with um, so one, once you have those settings changed, we're just going to save this again. Or sorry, we're going to save this as a new profile. Because we don't want to save over the preset. So we'll call this so Saturn 2.0. Sure. So back to platter size. We're going to bring in a model. Uh, we're going to bring in the largest piece of this model besides the base, obviously, but the base is going to be a mix of probably FDM, maybe resin, maybe all resin. I don't know. I haven't really decided what we're going to do there yet, but we're going to bring in his chest. This is the largest piece of the whole model. It's good. We're going to max out the build plate of this Saturn. Uh, we're going to print this guy quarter scale. So I don't know why I have two of these open. Let's close that one. All right. So let's bring it in. Superman. Torso open. All right. So this, the size of this is really small. I'd say it's probably one sixteenth scale. Maybe a little bigger. That would be 
pushing it though it's it's pretty small but I compared it to some of my other quarter scale models and we need to scale this torso 425 percent to hit quarter scale so go big or go home right So we're just going to orient this so that Prusa Slicer will like it. Now, you see the model is blue. Well, it goes blue when there is a part of the model that's outside of the build volume. See? So you want to just manipulate it until it's green. And Prusa likes it right there. It should be pretty good. All right. So Prusa Slicer likes it. Um, we're going to go ahead and make our holes. Now, rule number one for printing big models. Big models need big holes. The suction force on these is ridiculously large. It's not like printing a mini. I've seen guys trying to use um, 3D Printing Pro's settings to print huge parts and it just it's not gonna work. Tiny support heads they don't uh, they're just gonna rip right off. Suction force is crazy. But another thing I've seen is when you scale up everything has to scale up so you can't put a two millimeter hole in a model that the chest cavity is almost five inches across it, it's it's not going to end well I'm going to try and just rotate this a little bit more because when the supports kick in we want to try and have them as many as we can go up the back so that looks pretty good. All right, so big models, big holes. We're gonna enable hollowing. That's the setting I talked about here. Print settings, hollowing. If I had this enabled, as soon as I click on hollowing, it's gonna enable it. So I don't do that because it's bit me a couple times. Hole depth. Because we're running 1.5 millimeter walls, we don't need to drill a hole that's six, six millimeters deep. We can set this to four. Somewhere around four is probably good. Diameter, 15 millimeters. And we're gonna put one right there. Because if you look, I'm gonna zoom in here. first layers are going to start here you want to break that suction force as soon as possible so by putting a hole this big here within 10 layers you've now created a massive massive um, air leak that will completely get rid of all your suction force but that's not where I, I never just put one hole so we're gonna go drop it down to maybe 10 or 11 I'm gonna throw another one up here and then uh, always watch for this sometimes I get random random holes if I get too click happy with my mouse uh, we'll put one up here and we'll scale this one down just so it's not so close to the sidewall there so three big holes in the bottom and I'll throw one in the arm here just for drainage purposes for when I clean it out and that's pretty much it for that so once you got your holes all set ignore this one this is for um, I'm gonna do a video on drilling tubes for LED wires and running conduit things like that for uh, electronics but we're going to cover that in another video later. 
So after this, once you got your holes in, and one as close to the build plate as you can, a big one, we're going to go to supports. Actually, before we do that, we'll go to uh, preview hollow and drilled model. And what this is going to do is it's going to give you a preview of what the model looks like on the inside. So once this is done, I'll use this clipping view and it basically works like your, your layers and it'll clip the view and you'll be able to see inside the model, see if there's any funny geometry or if maybe you had a random hole somewhere drilled by accident. Alright, so you can see that the, uh, the hollow and drilled model is, uh, well, you can see a preview of it here. So you see the holes go kind of translucent. You can see into the middle. But a cool little tool here is if you use this clipping view, let me scroll this up, actually see the inside of the model. So once, uh, once I have my holes drilled, I'll do this so that I can get an idea if there's any weird geometry or sometimes you'll end up with a double wall somewhere and you might need to increase your wall thickness just to get past that, but um, I just get a good idea of what I'm looking at on the inside before we support this. So for instance, like you can see this arm key here is going to be kind of hanging out into nowhere so we're going to have to make sure that Prusa puts supports on the inside. So to do that we're going to go to the support menu here and we're going to click auto generate. And then it's going to do its thing and I'll show you guys what it looks like once the auto supports kick in here. All right, so supports have come back. They look pretty good. Um, looks like one heck of a mess, but you guys will see once I send this thing to the printer how it's going to turn out. Um, so one area that I always look for is these keys tend to the internal geometry, it, it sometimes doesn't support it very well. So what I'm going to do is just hit manual editing. That looks good there, but I feel like it needs a couple here. Maybe hit a couple here. And keep in mind that this is all going to be inside, so it doesn't doesn't really matter. Just throw throw a few here and there just to get it to make sure that everything stays rock solid. That, that's all you're looking for. And this one too seems like there's not quite enough here. So let me just put a bunch here. I mean if you miss and it's you know just put them wherever you feel like there might be an issue but apply changes it's going to update it all right so as you can see um, all those little spots that I told it to add some supports, they're all added in there now. So the inside of this model should be well well supported to, um, to not have any failures. Um, you can see what I mean by how big the cavity is. You need, you need quite a few and you need them to be solid. So I'm happy with that. Um, just this clipping view. 
Let's see. You can just see the density of them in the bottom there. It's it's crazy, but you know when you're when you're printing huge parts, it makes a world of difference. So it's saying that the object is outside when it generated the support. The uh, the raft here is just kind of sticking out. So all we gotta do is move this up until the supports turn green. There we go. Alright. Then we can go ahead and um, we're going to export this. So we're going to go File, Export, Export Plate as STL, including supports. We're going to call this Superman Torso Fixed Tubed. HBC. Let that save out. Uh, this model has a lot of geometry, so it might take a while. It might take less time depending on what you're slicing. But once it's done, come back and then uh, we'll move on to Lychee. Okay, now that the file is exported, you'll see it down here. STL file exported. Path. You know where to find it. We're going to close out of Prusa Slicer. We're done in here now. And we're going to switch over to Lychee. We're going to bring in our model, add files. It's always going to give you this warning, so say yes. Alright, so once your model's loaded in the Lychee, uh, we'll give it a quick look over here. Make sure that there's no areas that are outside of the build volume. Sometimes, uh, switching between slicers, it doesn't always correlate for the build plate size. But that is looking pretty good. This is still telling me that there's a mesh issue here. Uh, I've looked at it, I don't see anything that's any concern, but you can always uh, repair it through NetFab or whatever. Keep in mind that if your file is over a certain size, NetFab's not going to work. Okay, so no more issues. Just go to export. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ignore this because I know that there's no issues with this mesh that I can see. So uh, I'm not going to go into settings because, you know, that's something you kind of have to do before you decide to print a model that's 350 milliliters of resin. Um, but in a later video, we can go over how I calibrated my printer and the settings I use that seem to work best for me. But... Uh, We'll save that for another day. Uh, we're just going to export. We'll wait for the countdown here. Okay, continue. Let's see this is HPC. And let it slice and get it on the USB drive. And hopefully. Um, I can get a time lapse of this thing actually printing for you guys. So, uh, that'll come up next, and then uh, we'll take a look at what the final result is. Um, 
you'll see hopefully the time lapse worked but you'll see that uh there's a color change there i had to go from gray to flesh colored i ran out of gray in my vat so uh that's the only reason for that but here's the side that all the supports are on you can see that we just have some very very minimal cleanup to do all the details are still in there you can see all the uh details in his belt all the details in his suit were retained we just have to do some light light sanding and this thing will be ready for primer 